Goodbye, son. Hi, Michael. This is Sarah from Children's Hospital. I can't believe it's been a whole year. I want to tell you that I'm so sorry about Connor. We all loved him so much. He was such a brave little boy. Michael, we have another little boy here now, and he has cancer too. His name is Mason. And the doctors refused to give Mason any hope, just like they refused to give Connor any hope. And like you told us once, if you take away someone's hope, you take away their only reason for living. If this child dies, he'll leave behind someone who loves him, someone who needs him. And love is the key to happiness. I know you can help this little boy, Michael. Every person's life is so important. All we need is a reason to live. I pray that you get this message. Please call me at the hospital as soon as you can. Little Mason might not have much longer. You can do this, Michael. Just smile and pretend you're fine. You can do this. You're a good son. And you're a good dad. Alright, let's go. Wait. One of the kids made this for me. It's to keep us safe on the ride home. sleep in on Sunday mornings. Well, this morning I, uh, I'm not sure what I was thinking. You know something? You really amaze me. Who, me? Yes, you. And how's that? Michael, how long have we been neighbors? Uh, two... Nine years. And I've seen the hardships that you've endured these past nine years. And you still get up every morning. And you face them with courage. I see people walk around and they're mad at God. They're mad at the world. They treat people like dirt. And you roll around. And you still smile at everyone you meet. You've never given up. You're the bravest person that I know. Everyone has hardships in life. Mine are just more obvious. Some of them anyway. So are you gonna make this brave man some red beans and rice like my mom used to? <laughs> you know you've asked me that every day for the last nine years. Well, there's a solution to that. You know. Since my Jim passed away, you're the only person that tries to make me laugh every day. You're a good person, Michael Meredith. Do you know you've told me that every day for the past nine years? <laughs> 
some smart girl is going to figure out a way to break down that wall that you've built up around you. I doubt it. I pray for it every night. You know, Michael, you can't live without love, and you can't live with hate. Well, I better go before you try to set me up with another one of your hairy daughters. You'll love her, Michael, really. She's only been in prison a few years. And you'll get used to that back hair poking through her shirt. And she's doing much better with her Tourette's. Stop much it. better. Stop it. Have a good day, neighbor. I hope today's one of your good days. And I'll be expecting some red beans and rice when I get back. Oh, don't hold your breath. See, that's just mean. What do you see? A hospital for dying children. How could your God let this happen? May I help you find anything? Uh, no, thank you. I know the way. Well, have a good day, sir. something you'd like to ask me? Why are you in a wheelchair? Wheelchair? I'm not sure what you're referring to. The wheelchair you're sitting in, silly. Oh, this wheelchair. Well, I had a really bad car wreck when I was 17. How did you do that? Well, I'd been drinking alcohol that night, and my house was only two minutes away, and I thought I could make it but I was wrong. I ran my car into a tree and I was thrown out and the car ran over my neck. 
and when I woke up in the hospital, the doctor told me I'd be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Does it hurt? Does it hurt now? No, sweetie. It doesn't hurt now. Well, that's good. How did you get here? I drove here in a little blue Trans Am. You can drive? <laughs> yes, I can drive. So why did you hit the tree? Well, I'd been drinking that night. Mm -hmm. And my house was only two minutes away, and I thought I could make it. But I was wrong. You know, I never understood why my parents got so mad at me when I was just a few minutes late. But that night, it all made perfect sense. You should never drink and drive. You could get hurt. So, are you okay? Yes. Are you sure? Uh huh. Do I need to get a nurse? No. My mom will be here in a couple of minutes. You sure, baby? Uh huh. Your mom, huh? Mm hmm. Hey, you sure you don't want me to get the nurse? I'm sure. Okay. You gonna be okay by yourself right here? Yes. Okay. Well, if you need anything, my name is Michael, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. My name is Sandra. You're welcome, sweetheart. Bye. Bye. Last week, Mason started having terrible abdominal pain. His mom and dad put him in the car and started driving as fast as they could to the emergency room. But on the way to the hospital, they accidentally cut some guy off in traffic. And the guy got so mad that he sped up beside them and fired a gun in their car. Oh my God. Mason's dad was driving. The bullet hit him in the head and killed him instantly. The car then drove off the highway and struck the concrete pillar under an overpass. Right before that happened, Mason's mom had just taken off her seatbelt to lean over and check on Mason make sure he was okay. She was thrown through the windshield and landed on the highway. She's in a coma. And Mason lived through it. But his abdominal pain turned out to be a malignant tumor the size of a grapefruit. He just started chemo, but his doctor says he's not going to make it. Same thing they told Connor. Mm-hmm. But you're the reason Connor beat cancer. He couldn't have done it without you, by his side. Without the person who loved him most, right there with him the whole time. Pain is always easier to handle when you're surrounded by people who love you. I know you can do the same for Mason. Do you want to meet him? Yes. Now listen, don't let the smile on his face fool you. He pretends everything's fine on the outside, but he's suffering on the inside. Are you ready? This is Mason. Hi, Mason. Do you want to play football with me? Sit. Hut! 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 Ah. 
Connor. I'm really sorry I can't throw the ball any better than that, man. I'm, I'm really sorry, buddy. Daddy, it, it's fine. We don't have to play anymore. Maybe a little later, okay, buddy? Okay. Mason, you can go play now, sweetie. I can't do this. I'm sorry. I'll just take the stairs. You can't go down the stairs in the wheelchair. Don't you have somewhere to be? Do you just ride the elevator up and down all day? Yes, I have some place to be. I'm sorry, can I help you find it? I know the way. Mind if I sit here? All the other tables are full. Uh, sure. I heard you were still in the building. Really? Who told you that? Oh, a little blonde with a fondness for elevators. Her room has a view of the parking lot. And a view of a little blue car parked in the handicap space. Ah. Uh. When did it start raining? You know, Louisiana weather. Give it an hour, it'll change. So, you like hanging out in hospital cafeterias? I thought they'd have some red beans and rice, but of course they didn't. <clears throat> Don't you want to know her story? Nope. Her name is Hope. She came right after Connor did. When her parents found out she had cancer, they brought her here. They dropped her off, and then they left. And they never came back. Michael. just buried our son and you're leaving it's your fault connor died michael you know you don't mean that sweetheart god must be punishing you don't you see do you really think it's a coincidence that you've been in that chair for 20 years god can heal you in a second but he never has and do you really think it's a coincidence that connor died the way he did God must be punishing you. It's the only explanation. You know that's not true. You're just hurting right now. You know that's not true. Then why? <laughs> why would God take a little boy?
Everything in this house reminds me of Connor. Then we'll find another house. Everything in this town reminds me of Connor. We'll find another town. You remind me of Connor. And staring me up inside. I love you, Michael. But I've got to go. You've got to let me go. Michael. Michael. So that little girl has been in this hospital with a terminal illness and no one to love her for an entire year. I'd give the world to have my child back. I can't believe there are people in this world who would abandon theirs. How could this happen? Well, some people blame God for it. Hope hasn't been sick the whole time she's been here. After her first four months of surgeries and chemo, we thought she was cured. But then last week, her cancer came back. Today was her first day back on chemo. We thought we'd let her ride the elevator till she was ready. That's where she had to be. Oh, God. If you hadn't talked her into it, she never would have gone. She'd still be riding that elevator till this time next week. Yeah, I didn't exactly talk her into it. Could I at least apologize to her? Tell her I'm sorry. Hi, Hope. My name is Michael. I shouldn't have snapped at you in the elevator. Sometimes when adults get sad or mad or feel bad, they take it out on innocent people. My little boy died a year ago today. And I feel sad and mad and bad. And I took it out on you and I shouldn't have. You didn't do anything wrong, sweetheart. It was me. And I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Well, I'll leave you alone now. You be strong, sweetheart. Be strong. What happened to you, little boy? Did you really have more blessed on like me? That's a big word for such a little girl. It's okay, whenever I hurt, I always remember it could always be worse. Did your little boy have cancer like me? Yes. His name was Connor. But he didn't die of cancer. He beat cancer. He did? Yes, Connor beat cancer. But the doctor told me I can't beat cancer. Well, doctors don't know everything. They just think they do. God knows everything, home. God knew I needed somebody and he sent me. How did the little boy die? 
He died in a car wreck on the way home from the hospital. A drunk driver ran a stoplight and ran into Connor's side of the car. I'm sorry. Well, I better go. You're leaving me? I have to. When are you coming back? I can't come back, sweetheart. I'm sorry. You were late for your treatment this morning. We're not going to let that happen again, are we? Yes, sir. Good. Hey, Doc. Don't you think you were a little hard on her? She's just a little girl, man. What's your name? Michael Meredith. Connor's father. You remember Connor? You weren't even his doctor. I remember them all. Code blue, room 230. Code blue, room 230. Code blue, room 230. Whose room is that? That's little Sandra's room. What's it called, Blue? It's when a little girl's heart stops beating. <gasps> Hope? It's all clean now. Get your stuff. Good day. You too. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be in prison? I just got out today and came straight here. I had to tell you how sorry I am for what I did to Connor. I never meant to hurt anyone, but I did. It wasn't the alcohol. It was me. I know that my pain will never compare to yours, but I will see Connor's face every day for the rest of my life. 
I'm really, really sorry. Steven. Thank you. Connor, I have to tell you something. This morning, I almost took my own life. I almost blew my one chance of helping another child. I'm so sorry, son. It's just so hard living up here without you. Parents are not supposed to outlive their children. I'm going to live through this, son. But I don't think I'll ever be the same. I met some other children today at Children's Hospital. They were all so brave, just like you were. Yeah, I didn't notice when you were in the hospital. All the other children there. Some of these children have so many problems and you can't even see. They just look normal, you know? Just like... Just like regular kids. They have no idea. That disease is eating them up inside. You'd have no idea these beautiful children are dying. When I saw them, all I could think about was you and how back when you were first diagnosed and you looked up at me and you said, Daddy, please make the pain go away. 
Please make the pain go away. And I remember that helpless feeling because there was nothing I could do. As bad as I wanted to help, there was nothing I could do. And I just can't hear another child say that to me, you know? I just don't know if it's worth it. I just don't know if I can go through that again, Connor. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I man, it's one cool ride you have. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. My name is Rock. Michael. Nice to meet you, Michael. Nice to meet you too, Rock. What is this, Camaro? How much do you take for it? Actually, it's a Trans Am. And you wouldn't want it. It's been wrecked. I bet it still do 160 mile per hour, right? <laughs> well, that's what they say, but I wouldn't know. What is good to have a sports car and you don't drive it that fast? Nah, I really don't drive it that fast. But, uh, when my little boy was alive, he used to love this car. He used to love for me to take him driving in it with the T-tops out. So I guess, uh, I guess this car makes me feel like he's still with me, you know? I feel you. I feel you, though. Ain't it amazing how one little thing can take us back to a different time in our lives? That's right, man. That's absolutely right. Well, let me get into this job interview. All right, man. You take care. You too, buddy. Nice to meet you. You too, Rock. Right. See you, man. All right, man. Take care. Call your mom, tell her the good news. Yeah. Sweetheart, your son and I have the best birthday present we've ever given you. That's right, no more bad birthdays. Are you ready? Your son was just discharged from Children's Hospital. He's cancer free. I think she likes our present. Sweetheart, Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. Where are you? Are you on your way to the hospital? All right, turn around and we'll meet you at home. I love you too. Okay, here's Colin. She wants to talk to you for some reason. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe, I don't know. Hey mom, happy birthday. Yeah, I'm really excited too. I'll see you at home. Love you too. Bye. What's wrong, man? Nothing. Mom said whenever we get home that there's a thousand hugs and kisses waiting for me. <laughs> well, that's what you get for having a mom who loves you. Now put your seatbelt on. Dad, 
dad. Hey, look at me. I couldn't save you from getting cancer, but I can save you from getting hurt in the car. Now get mad at me if you want, but I will never let anything happen to you again. Yes, sir. I'm putting it on right now. Good son. You're a good dad. Wait. One of the kids made this for me. It's to keep us safe on the ride home. I'm so proud of you, Connor. You were so brave through it all, man. You're the toughest kid I know. From now on, life will be better. Dad, I wouldn't be able to do it. Connor. 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 Sweetheart, but it's time for your next chemo treatment. We need to get you dressed. Will you wait for me, Michael? I'll be here when you get back. You promise? I promise. Okay. Hope? you a present. It's a cell phone. So whenever you want to talk to me, you can call me, okay? Here's how it works. You pop this open and press that button and then that button. And that'll call my cell phone, okay? Now you'll never be lonely again. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello? Hi, Hope. Yeah, the phone works. That's a good test. Now you need to get dressed, okay, or you're gonna be late. Okay. Bye-bye. Hello, Hope. Pizza? I, I don't think you'll be in the mood for pizza when you get through, baby. I don't think so. 
Okay. And go get dressed. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. You, you need to get off the phone now and get dressed. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, this could have been a mistake. Hey, Mason. Hi, Michael. How you doing, buddy? It's all gonna be okay. Well... Never give a cell phone to a little girl. Hello, Hope. Ice cream? You wanna go with me to get Hope some ice cream? Yeah, we can get you some ice cream. Okay, you'll have it when you get back. Okay, bye-bye. I promise. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, you, you need to get off the phone so you can get dressed, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Let's go get Hope some ice cream. Suddenly there were huge waves that hit the seashore and people started running around and a lot of women were trapped because they couldn't run and a lot of children also were trapped. About 60 people are supposed to have died. Who turned this on, Hope? Hey, Lynn. I hope to be back for New Year with my family. Where's Barney when you need him? We'll never forget this Christmas. There were people running, uh, asking if, if they had seen someone, and it reminded me of the days after 9-11 when people were walking around in a daze trying to see if anyone could uh, locate one of their loved I, uh, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary Rod Pace, the Lieutenant Governor, <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and to, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. Daddy. Yeah, Connor? Why did God kill all those people? God didn't do this, son. Evil people did. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. Michael. Michael. Yeah, Hope? Why did God kill all those people? I don't know, baby. I don't know anymore. Let's watch something else, okay? Okay. Hey, it's a show about monkeys. You like monkeys, huh? You carry one around with you all the time. Hey, he's helping that handicapped guy just like me. Hmm. He's picking stuff up off the floor for him and handing it back to him. That is one sweet monkey. Wow, he got <coughs> the monkey a cold drink out of the refrigerator. That is a one cool monkey. What if I could get a monkey to clean my house? I need a monkey. Real monkey, hello. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot.
forgot to give you that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> it's kind of melted. Sorry. But it's ice cream, just like you wanted. You might have to drink it, but, uh, oh yeah, here's a, here's a spoon you can sop it up. <laughs> <laughs> but you got your ice cream, just like you wanted there. Okay. <laughs> Watch those monkeys again. <laughs> Get it yourself, little boy. I was in children's hospital and I got scared. Mm -hmm. You know what my dad used to do to make me feel better? Mm -hmm. He used to try to make me laugh. <laughs> he would say things like, Michael, get up out of that chair and let your mom have a place to sit. <laughs> he knew I couldn't get up out of this chair. <laughs> Sweetie, you know, my hair's falling out too. See right there? It's like a bald spot right there. You see that? That is a bald spot. <laughs> yeah, thank you for noticing too. You have a double chin too. All right, that's enough of that. Aware. <laughs> oh, it's time for you to get some rest. Could be at any time. <gasps> 
How could you tell that little girl she could die at any moment? Are you trying to scare her to death? I'm just doing my job. Are you scared, little girl? Really? So your job is to take away any hope she has of ever getting better? There's no hope of her getting better this time. So I hear you're gonna die this time. Michael. You don't know that. You can't predict the future. Michael, Hope's dying. You need to accept that. And so does she. Do you really want to make Michael suffer through watching another child die? Are you really that selfish? You know that would kill Michael. Michael. If Hope dies, It'll be because you took away her hope. If hope dies, it'll be because you made her stop fighting to stay alive. Her death will be on your hands. There's no hope for you now, Hope. But there is hope for Michael if you push him away so that he doesn't have to watch you die. You have to push him away. Michael. Michael, I know you lost a child, but I've lost 107. I'll do anything it takes to save one of those children, but I'm not going to give the children false hope. as fast as I could, sweetheart. Go! You know you don't mean that. Go! Go! Okay. I'm going. You sure you want me to go? child died. Do you really want to stay here and kill another one? Hey, man.
phone calling. Ghost is clear. Let's find another exit. Hello, Michael. We gotta get you a bell. <laughs> Are you okay, Michael? I'm great. How are you? Hmm. You know, you once told me a story about when you were first paralyzed at age 17. And the doctors left your parents in, your mom and daddy in the first time in intensive care after your wreck. They saw you, the little boy, lying there in traction with a broken neck separate spine and 65 stitches in your head. And unable to move anything below your neck or feel anything. And you said you remembered the look on their face and how you had hurt them more than anything in this whole world. So from that time on, anytime your parents came into the hospital room, you smiled through your pain, and you pretended that everything was okay, because you didn't want to hurt them anymore. All you wanted to do was cry and hear your parents tell you that everything was going to be okay. Hope. I gotta go. Della Miller, thank you. You're the best person I know.
Code blue, room 224. Code blue, room 224. Code blue, room 224. now. You'll never be in pain again. You'll never be scared again. You'll never have to worry about going to sleep and never waking up. <laughs> Goodbye, baby. You want me to show you? Okay. Let's go to my car. Okay, Hope, this is how I drive. I get in my car. See this right here? I push in for the brake, and I pull down for the accelerator. 
I push in to make it stop, and I pull down to make it go. And that's how I drive. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. We have to get you to chemo now, okay? Okay, let's go. <coughs> Hi, uh, could I get some juice for a hope, please? Juice? Look, sir, I'm new around here and I'm still trying to learn the ropes. And I can't imagine having to live here and eat the food, let alone wanting to drink some juice. I tell you, the food in this cafeteria doesn't taste that great, and then they charge you both your arms and your legs for it. <laughs> Hi, my name's Maria, and this is. Ryan. Hi, I'm Michael. Okay. Y'all can go on in. Oh, I was late for work this morning. Riding behind this slow old lady. I think she was going a mile an hour. Mm -hmm. when she spins on gas. Slow old woman. Ugh. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Becky. Hi, Becky. How are you? Good. Hi, Mason. Hi, Michael. Come on in, guys. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go get an ace bandage or something for this old knee. It's swelling. I bumped it in the doorway this morning. Pain shoots all the way down in it when I kneel and pick something up or just bend it down. Oh, that sucker hurts. Oh. Hi, I'm Shane. Hi, Shane. How are you, man? Good. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Katie. Hi, Katie. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Hey, y'all just been going through so much. Times are so stressful. I'm too young for all these problems. Hey, guys. Hello. What's Hi. up? Hi. How you doing? Hi. What's your name? Daniel. Hi, Daniel. How are you, man? Hi. How about you? Dale. Hi, Dale. Good to see you. Come on in, guys. You here for the medical play? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Come on in. It's right over there. Good. My husband called me. He's going to be working the late shift again tonight. I have to go home and be by myself. I <laughs> guess I'll pop some popcorn and watch TV. I'm just going to be so lonely. Mm -hmm. Watching Lifetime tonight or something. <laughs> Popping some popcorn. Hey. Well, hi there. What's your name? Joseph. Hi, Joseph. How are you, buddy? Fine. You here for the thing? Come on in. Oh, door yesterday, and I had to park in the very last parking space. I walked all the way to the store. I waited in line for 45 minutes to be checked out. Then I had to walk all the way back to the car. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. I'll help you with her. Hey, I'm the new nurse. My name's Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Michael. Hey, I'm Dana. I knew a little girl in Children's Hospital 20 years ago named Dana. When she was six months old, she developed spina bifida, and her parents abandoned her at Children's Hospital. But every time you'd come in a room, she'd smile real big at you and tap the side of her cheek for you to blow her a kiss. Come on, Dana! That's Joseph. He comes in my room at the crack of dawn and never lets me sleep, waking me up. Dana, Dana, come on, Dana, get up. <laughs> every morning. Every morning? Every morning. Wow. Yes. I never get any rest. Oh, sorry about that. Come on, Dana! You're pretty popular around here. Well, I'm the oldest, so you know how that is. I guess I'm just like a big sister to all of them. Hmm. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming.
You know, sitting here, these kids just taught me a really tough lesson. Here I've been complaining about things that are so minor. And look at how young they are. They haven't even lived their life yet. And I've had a chance to experience things and experience life. And I really have had a pretty good life. Juice, I'm not getting any younger here. Oh, sorry, baby. I'll get you some juice, sweetheart. It took a little longer than I was supposed to, didn't I? Yeah. I got to talking, I'm sorry. Here you go, sweetheart. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, let's go back to your room. Okay, boys and girls, this is Joey, and we're going to check him up today. Robin's leaving. Bye, Bye Robin. Robin. Tell him bye. We've got to go take a nap. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 And so we're going to look at him today and check him out. I've got this. What is this called? A stethoscope. Right, a stethoscope. I said it's free. What do I we said. use this for? For listening to his heart. Listen to his heart. That's right. Maria, you want to put this on? Let's check him out. Let's listen to his heart. How's his heart sound today? Good. Sounds good. Good job. That's right. Michael. Rock, right? Right. Hey, man. Hey. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Appreciate so it. So you're working here now? I'm in New Orleans. No kidding. Okay. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Hope. This is Rock, the New Orderly. Heyman not over with us. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. If you need anything, let me know, okay? You ready to get your juice for you for later? Okay. okay. Rock's a nice guy, isn't he? Just checking on, okay? He knows you're here. How's Mason doing? Doctor says he only has about a month to live. They didn't tell him that, did they? Sure. He's got a right to know. A right to know what? Some doctor's opinion? Would they get a new crystal ball in the doctor's lounge? Friends of yours? No, Michael. Just carrying a Bible does not make you a good person. It's what's in your heart that matters. You know, Mason saw you in the hall yesterday. Said you were fighting with Hope's doctor. 
said you were being mean to him. He deserved it. Why do you hate doctors so much? When I first became paralyzed at 17, I couldn't move or feel anything below my neck. The brilliant doctors told me I'd be that way for the rest of my life. When I told the doctors they were wrong about me, when I told them I was going to get better, I was going to beat this, you know how they reacted? They told me I better stop thinking I was going to get better because I was never going to get better and I better get used to it. They told me I had false hope. The doctor had a point. False hope is better than no hope. I was just a child. Hope was all I had. And the doctors were trying to take it away from me. I was strong enough not to listen to them. But other children weren't so strong. They gave up. And when you're hurt that badly and you give up, you die. I watched children die because of what these doctors told them. And everyone just lets these doctors get away with it. Even your God does nothing to stop it. Why do you hate God so much? When my dad was alive, he would have given anything anything for his little boy to walk again for 20 years I prayed every night for God to heal me and for 20 years every night God ignored my prayers you know you grow up in church being told over and over that God loves you and will answer your prayers. Ask and ye shall receive. And then your child gets cancer. And every person of every church in the community prays for God to heal your child. And your child just suffers and dies. That is false hope. God is false hope. Now I can understand how someone could be an atheist. Because if you don't believe in God, then He never has the chance to hurt you. God does love you, Michael. Michael, God didn't kill your son. A drunk driver did. He could have stopped it. He could have stopped it. Don't you see, Michael? God put us on this earth with a purpose, with a choice. If He stopped us from doing all the bad things, then, then He'd be denying us that choice. It's not God's fault for all the bad things that happen in this world. It's our fault.
What did they tell her? They told her it was her own fault that she has cancer. She doesn't have enough faith. I'm coming back. They're not worth it, Michael. I'm glad you came, Michael. I have a surprise for you. This is my pastor. Hello, Michael. Hi. God tells me you've been in that wheelchair long enough. Yeah, five years is a long time. Well, today's the day you walk again. I'm here to heal you. Do you believe in God's healing power, Michael? Yes. Michael, I command you to move your legs. Move your legs, Michael. I'm trying. Michael, get out of that wheelchair and walk. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's your own fault you can't walk. Until you have faith, you'll never walk again. I'm so sorry, Michael. I'm so sorry. Hey! You are not God. God will heal that little girl in His time, not yours. God will heal us in His time, not yours. Hey, Chaplain. How can you say they're not worth it? When you believe in something, it is always worth fighting for. Thank you. You're a good man. Yes, Mason? Why did God flood New Orleans? Is God punishing them for being bad? Oh no, son. There are a few bad people in every city, not just New Orleans. And there are a lot of good people in New Orleans, too. Like the ones who took care of me when I was a kid in Children's Hospital. God let New Orleans flood. Sometimes it takes a long time for us to find out God's purpose for doing something. When Hope was still with us, she told me she thought I was sent by God to help her. But now, after all this time, I finally realize God sent Hope to help us. 
She was so young, and yet she still touched so many lives. And when her work here was done, God took her home. I cannot explain God's purpose for every tragedy. But I do know one thing for sure. Every time I look at you, I know that God can turn any tragedy into something good.